Hey, what's good everybody? Happy Monday. Glad to be back here. It was a good time on Friday up at the University of Florida. Actually met a lot more of you than I thought I would. Very Thank you very much for coming out and seeing us there. Uh, it was a great gym meet, by the way, if you're into gymnastics. My daughter is, so it was very, very exciting, actually. Um, but hey, maybe we'll be back soon. I'll let you guys know when I go somewhere else. Seems like a lot of you wanted to stop by and say hi and... Uh, that was kind of interesting. I've never experienced anything like that. But let's talk about the markets today. Uh, we have the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ all down on the day. We've got the uh, Dow lower by 180. The S&P is down 19. The NASDAQ off 39. This is the worst day of the year for the Dow, which really isn't saying a lot because the markets haven't really been down. So we officially go on record today as having the worst day of the year. Let's take a look at the S&P. Here's a chart. Taking a look at the S&P futures, uh, look, just a little down day, really. Not much to be concerned about there. If we go over to the NASDAQ, you can see a very similar picture. Very much still in an uptrend, very much still strong. The Dow, same thing, very much in a very positive sort of mode at the moment. Um, if the markets were to pull back here, I don't think anybody would really care. I don't think that's uh, at the moment something that people are too scared of. There was a spike in the volatility index. We'll take a look at one of the ETFs. Mm, let's go over here. Let's look at the VIX futures. So VIX, that measures the level of fear in the markets. Um, we saw a spike today of just about 9% in the VIX. And this is having one of its better sort of streaks, right? A streaks of up days, I'll say. Um, one of the better moves it's seen in quite a while. So the theory here is that people are saying, okay, the markets are a little too high. How about a hedge? And the VIX futures or VIX related products, volatility products, can be used as hedges. So a lot of portfolio managers will go in and use some of that to sort of protect from the downside. If you are somewhere near retirement or have an account or a type of vehicle that you're trying to protect, then sure. Short-term traders as well, you might look at some kind of protection here. Not a recommendation, just pointing it out that a lot of other people seem to be doing that. If you have a long time until you retire, your accounts are with Jazz Wealth or I'm managing them for you, then this is not a worthwhile expense. The volatility products are very expensive and we would rather see the markets fall so that we could buy cheaper rather than hedge what we already have. We don't mind if the markets fall for a little while if we have a long time until retirement. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a few of the stocks that were affecting your portfolios today. The best performer today by far in the S&P was Dr. Pepper Snapple. First of all, did you know Dr. Pepper was a... a a public company, and that Dr. Pepper also owns Snapple and a few other brands there. Uh, here's the deal. They're getting bought out potentially by Keurig. Uh, Green Mountain Roasters is actually the name of the company. They make the Keurig machine, that little coffee thing that you guys, uh, you know, you put the cup in there and you pull the thing down and it makes a cup of coffee magically in like 10 seconds. Um, I love mine. I, I couldn't live without mine, honestly. <laughs> but um, those guys are buying Dr. Pepper Snapple. Now, remember, I always try to tell you guys, Think about what is under the story. That's great. You know, Keurig's going to buy Dr. Pepper. Keurig is not a public company at the moment, so you can't buy them. They went private a couple years back. But why are they doing this? Is it that Keurig wants to now offer soda and teas and stuff? No. Is it that somehow they've changed their mind and they don't want to do coffee anymore and that they want to start selling soda? No. Think about it. Let's look under the surface here. So Keurig is, where can you buy those at? You can buy the cups in grocery stores, Starbucks, uh, Dunkin' even. Um, you can buy the machine, the Keurig, different, the machines that they offer in Walmart and Best Buy, you know, Macy's, things like that. So that's their company. They want to buy Dr. Pepper Snapple. Where's Dr. Pepper sold? Convenience stores, um, also grocery stores, but a lot of convenience stores, individual machines where you put your money in and out pops a Dr. Pepper or a Snapple. So think about the reason here. They don't want to sell soda. They want the distribution where, you know, they're completely sold in different places right now. So Dr. Pe or, um, Keurig is saying, we want access to the Dr. Pepper distribution line. We want to plug our products into that same distribution. So when the guys go put the Dr. Pepper on the shelves, put them in the soda machines, now they can start to include their products as well. I promise you that may not be out yet. I don't know. I didn't see any news on it, but that will be the prime reason that you hear about on TV, that people are talking about this deal being probably a big success. It's cheaper for them to buy distribution than go build it themselves. So the deal actually is, I don't think there was a number on it. 
Um, shareholders of Dr. Pepper Snapple, if you happen to own that today, lucky you, you're gonna get 103.75 per share and a special cash dividend, and you're also gonna get 13% of the new company when it comes out. So that's Dr. Pepper Snapple. Obviously, I had a great day today. Everybody was very excited about that. Let's take a look at Wynn Resorts, also a pretty bad performer today. Unfortunately, they, you know, they, well, look, if you go back a little bit here, they had a great earnings result. Everybody was excited. We talked about it in our videos. Macau. Macau was finally showing success. They were making profits there and everything was growing. Unfortunately, news came out about Steve Wynn and um, sexual allegations. You know, I, I'm not going to kind of get into that, but if they're true, that sucks. And so the stock is really... Um, taking a hit in the meantime, down about 10% today. That's close to $4 billion in market cap or value of the company that's been lost. In my opinion, now I'm not giving a recommendation here, but in my opinion, the company is going to be profitable or not going to be profitable moving forward, no matter who is in charge. So, you know, maybe there's some transition period, but for the stock to fall so much so quickly, Personally, I think that's a little overdone. If you happen to be an options trader, this is not a recommendation, but if you happen to be an options trader, you have the opportunity to be 90% out of the money and still get about a buck and a quarter for those puts if you believe in naked options or you do that sort of thing. To me, that shows the level of fear is so outrageous at the moment. That's what happens around news events. And I, I just think it's a little bit overdone here. But either way, it's a sad story. I hope it's not come not true, but obviously it's leaning that way since he's kind of ducking and dodging and stuff. You know, I, I don't know what to say about that. We, we got to kind of get past all that in this world. But that'll take me to Apple. Um, Apple. So here's the deal with Apple. It's uh, falling again. You look at the charts there. It's had a rough couple of days here. Um, remember last week we talked about JP Morgan and JP Morgan saying that their iPhone X production was going to be cut in half. And they were just taking a shot in the dark, I, I think. I don't think they knew anything at the time. Well, today the Nikkei came out and they said, yup, 50%. They're going to cut production down to 20 million phones, which was um, a difference from 40 million phones. So not looking good. It looks like people don't like the iPhone X so much, or at least they're not buying it as much as people anticipated or the company anticipated. That's unfortunate, but here, again, keep this in mind. While the stock may be volatile in the short term, is Apple an iPhone company? Is that what they do? Do they sell iPhones for a profit? Absolutely not. That is one of their products, but it's not a loss leader, but it's almost acting like that, where people, where they say, let's get the phones out to people, and then they'll use our products. They'll buy from the App Store. They'll use iTunes. They'll use all of our services, maybe even buy some other products, that's what Apple does. They are not an iPhone company. So in the short term, yeah, you know, it's probably going to be a little rough, but not indicative of where the company's headed, in my opinion. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but -da -ba -da -ba -da. What else? Hey, uh, Dell. Do you remember Dell? Dude, you're getting a Dell. Are anybody old enough to remember that, the commercial? No? All right. Well, so Dell is actually considering going public again, and this is not brand new news. So Dell used to be a public company, I believe in 2012, late 2012, early 2013, they went private. Now they didn't do that because they were in trouble or something. They did that to rebuild, get a whole new slew of investors, build the company back up and launch it public again. And every one of those investors was going to cash in. Well, that's not really working out in their favor. So what they're doing is they actually bought a company called VMware. And let's see, are they still out there? So let's go to the charts. And that explains today's movement on VMware down 16%. Dell owns about 60% of this company. I believe they just bumped it up to 80% actually. So don't hold me to that number. So Dell private owns, let's say 80% of this company public. Dell goes, wait a minute, rather than go public, why don't we just do a reverse merger? And so what a reverse merger is, is where the smaller company actually buys the larger company and it creates one big company. So that's what this turns out that it may be, we, they may be heading that way. Uh, the reason for that is very simply cash, money, money. The guys that invested in Dell to take it private back in, in 2013, they've been sitting for five years with a lot of their money tied up in something they're not quite sure if it's going to work or not. They want their money back. So Dell is racing around trying to figure out a way to get the public to essentially give the investors their money back. Anyways, long geeky story. You guys said you wanted the details, so I'm sharing the details with you. 
in my opinion, it's about the dough. They want the money back. So if they can't go public and it takes too long to file the paperwork and get the whole IPO thing going again, then they're likely just going to reverse merger with their VMware company. And you'll likely see something VMware uh, Adele company. They'll change the name or something. So that's uh, what we have so far today. Was that enough? Do you like those sort of details? Was that too long and too geeky? I keep getting comments where you guys say, go ahead, get more detailed, dig in there, man, do what you got to do. That was an attempt today to dig in a little bit more. I hope that didn't uh, frustrate you and you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. If you like investing, retirement, anything like that, check out these videos above. I want to, speaking of distribution, I want to get my name out there. I want to be known as the retirement investing planner guy that helps. So be sure to check that out. Hope to talk to you soon.